he will be an underdog in their rematch this time after after that tonight. But that's what he does, you know, and, and he chose tonight to take on a pound for pound great. It didn't work out, but he should get credit for that. He got he stayed on his feet. I give him credit for that as well. But it's sport and he was beaten by the better man. And congratulations to Alexander Usyk. Yeah, it can always happen. Final one. Do you think he has the desire um, to rebuild again? He's had to do it before. It's different this time. He has to do it again. This is his life, Andy, to be honest with you. He's already talking about being in the gym. He lives and breathes boxing. Boxing saved him. Boxing made him. And he won't fall out of love with the game. When you do, that's time to walk away from the sport. The desire is still there. It will still be there. But, you know, you can have desire. You've got to be good enough. I know he's good enough. That, that performance was not... He, he'll know when he watches that back. That, was a, that for me, was, a, was an average performance from Anthony Joshua. There's so much better. He can do so much better in that fight. But he's facing, you know, a pound-for-pound pound great. And this is what happens in the sport. You can criticise Anthony Joshua. Oh, he got beat. Oh, but he's facing the best consistently. So you can't have it both ways, you know. You can, you, you, if you don't like it when they're fighting easy fights, but they get beat when they're fighting pound-for-pound pound greats, this is how it is. For me, that's what fighters should do, take on the very best. He did it. Tonight, he came off second best. But respect for him to take it on Usyk. Respect to Alexander Usyk. It was a high-level fight. And there's, there's a new unified heavyweight world champion. There's no, there's no point sulking about it. Like any bad news, you, you brush yourself down, you shake the other man's hand, you say, congratulations, you were the better man. I go back to the drawing board, I rebuild, and I go again. That's what he will do. He's a great guy, but tonight belongs to Alexander Usyk. Well said. Thanks for talking to us. Well, um, to be honest, I'm not, you know, I'm not surprised. Now, let me just go ahead and get this out of the way. I understand I have a reputation for bad picks when it comes to boxing, mostly because um, I usually go with my heart. And truthfully, I just don't really be giving a fuck. I don't gamble or none of that stuff. I don't. I'm sorry, but it is late. It's 8 p.m. here, 8.02 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And over in the UK right now, it's about 1 a.m. in the morning. So I don't suck fighters' cocks. I'm not what all a group think stuff. And I have covered every single Anthony Joshua fight. Well, except the debut. They're on, they're on YouTube. I have watched every single Alexander Usyk fight. I started doing research on him before he fought... Um, um, Christoph Glowoski, and I believe, I forgot where I watched that fight at, Cloud TV. I believe that's what the app or streaming service was called. And also, I'm not going to be no hoe or no thought, you know, and start whinging and minging and talking about how I told you so. That's not who I am. We don't get down like that. So for the next 30 minutes or so, what we're going to talk about, in fact, let's listen to um, Usyk's post-fight interview first. And then we're going to talk about all the details, what's next, how it affects Wilder Fury 3, F excuse me, Fury Wilder 3. Like, man, I got to be honest with you. The heavyweight division is on fire. Yeah, Fury versus Joshua doesn't have as much luster anymore. Yeah, Joshua versus Wilder doesn't have as much, you know, but we're going to talk about it. Let's listen to the post-fight interview from Alexander Usyk, and then we're going to talk about everything. And then I got to head over and start doing some UFC coverage. Ты уже undisputed champion и сейчас уже unified в супер тяжелых. Что это для тебя значит? Насколько много? Очень много. This means much for me, a lot. With two Olympic gold medalists, we always expected a very technical boxing match. Did the fight go the way that you thought it would? С двумя олимпийскими чемпионами в ринге мы всегда ожидаем высокотехнический матч. Прошла, прошел ли бой именно так, как ты предполагал? Он прошел именно так, как я предлагал, предполагал. Было пару моментов от Энтони, когда он зажимал, но это, это незначительные вещи. The fight went exactly the way I expected it to go. There were a couple of moments when Anthony pushed me hard, but just nothing special. Did you feel that you were close to forcing the stoppage in the 12th and final round? Ты ощущал, что уже близок к тому, чтобы остановить бой в последнем 12-м раунде? Не было такой задачи. Вначале где-то я это хотел сделать, попал, кинулся, но потом мой тренерский штаб привел меня в чувство. I had no objective to knock him out, because uh, my trainers, my corner, uh, pushed me not to do that. So at the beginning I hit him hard and just tried to knock him out, but then my trainer said just stop and do your job. 
I know that you never listen to them and you only listen to your team. But there were questions. Can Alexander Usyk be a heavyweight? Is he big enough to be a heavyweight? Is he good enough to be a heavyweight? Does that answer all of those questions in your mind? Я знаю, ты не сильно слышишь людей, которые сомневаются, ты слушаешь только свою команду. Но ответил ли ты этим боем на вопрос, достаточно ли ты большой для супертяжелого веса? Достаточно ли ты вообще боец для супертяжелого веса? Единственное, что я хотел сделать, это прославить своего Господа Иисуса Христа вот этим боем и сказать, что все слава Богу и победа это от Него. The only thing I wanted to do with this fight is to give praise to uh, my Lord Jesus Christ and to say that all comes from Him. I can see your wife in the background and your family at home. Have you got a message for everyone back in Ukraine who was watching? Мы видели здесь твои друзья и члены твоей семьи. Есть ли у тебя послание для людей, которые смотрят? Я хочу передать привет своей дочери Елизавете. Hey, my baby, I love you. Kirill, Mikhail, I send you hello. Uh, listen, uh, today... 12 uh, years ago, my wife sent me yes. Today, double happy. Today, 12. It's your wedding anniversary today? Yes. Yes. 12 years wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Yes. Just one more before I let you go. We were told in the build-up that there is a rematch clause. Do you think Anthony Joshua will invoke that rematch? Will you come back here for the rematch? We knew from the beginning that there is a point of revenge. Tell me, please. Энтони Джошуа вернется мстить или повторить? На данный момент я хочу домой, потому что я на протяжении с января месяца очень сильно готовился к этому поединку и практически был мало со своей семьей. Я очень сильно соскучился за своими детьми. Я хочу наблюдать, как они балуются, как они кричат, как они пачкают одежду. Я хочу все это наблюдать. I'm looking forward to this translation because you're pulling a face here, Alex Krasiuk. Yes, uh, so I've been working so hard since January for preparing in pre preparation for this fight. It took me some half a year and I didn't see my family for so long. I miss my children. I miss watching them playing. I want to go home. I want to stay with my family. I want to be happy with them. And I'm not thinking about the rematch at the moment. Final question then, can you be better? Have we seen the best of you, or can you be even better? Еще лучше, или мы увидели самого лучшего Усика? Не, не самого лучшего увидели. You didn't see the best Usyk. I can be much better. And the new heavyweight champion of the world sounds pretty good. Congratulations to you. So I, I think it was risky for people to be like, well, Joshua was just going to knock him out. Now, and I also understand. I'm going to go ahead and say, just like I said at the very beginning of the video, I'm not a good type of guy that's going to be like I told you so. I think that's weirdo female type shit. No disrespect to the females, the ladies. I'm just saying, like, I'm not that type of dude that's going to be like I told you so. You guys should listen to me, all that type, you know, stuff. But I've seen and covered outside of the first one, every single Anthony Joshua fight, fight, every one. I've studied extensively the career of Alexander Usyk before his HBO debut when he was fighting on services called Cloud TV, spelled with a K. I've been covering a guy for quite How some time. Greta. Dean Chaser underscore CJ has just donated $19.99. You sicken me. Shout out Usyk My bad. Ukraine. I turned the volume down on the Super Chats. I'm still, you know, working out the kinks with my platform. Um, Dream Chaser says, shout out to Usyk and the Ukraine. I was wrong. This is crazy now. We might have to wait another year and a half for a heavyweight unification. Yes, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the heavyweight division as a whole. And two weeks from today is going to be another pivotal match fight in both of the fighters' careers of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. They're fighting in their third fight on PBC, on Fox, and ESPN+. 
pay-per-view for $79.99. By the way, at 11 p.m. in three hours now, less than three hours on free TV Fox here in the States, you'll be able to watch a brand new episode of Inside Fury vs. Wilder 3. It's actually a new episode, not the replays they've been playing from the first episode that was supposed to, when the fight was supposed to happen back in, what was it, July or June? I didn't forget. So, you know, getting back to um, um, Usyk and Joshua, my concern, and it was answered very early, is how does Alexander Usyk deal or handle a full-blown six foot six, two hundred and forty pounds at his biggest what two fifty-seven heavyweight, and he ate him, like he just was, you know, they wasn't moving him. In fact, Usyk's shots, that very quick left hand, was moving Anthony Joshua from early. Even that weird type of awkward, I'm not going to call it weird, that unorthodox jab hook deal that Usyk's got going on. The dude is good. He's always been good. And he's the, the ring IQ. So if he didn't knock out Usyk, meaning Joshua, I didn't. I never saw that Joshua was going to be able to outbox Alexander Usyk. I never, like, they were, I, I never saw it. Now, yeah, he had some bright spots. But we didn't expect, especially for the people who picked Usyk to win, we didn't expect for Joshua to get shut out every round. But this is safe to say that Joshua was getting dominated. Joshua, let me pull up my card here. I gave Joshua. Now, round, now listen to me. My card, everyone's, you know, shit is different. I put a question mark around round four, but, you know, because that, that could have been a swing round. But I gave Joshua, I mean, Usyk rounds one, two, Three, four, AJ round five and six, Usyk seven, AJ eight, Usyk nine, and a sweep. You know, and a lot of those rounds were were swing rounds. Pretty much only round six and and eight was where I can really say like, yo, that was a full fledged AJ round. So since all of you guys are here, do me a favor down below in the description box and we're just getting started with everything there's a lot of big plans going on and thank you who to everybody who's been supporting me over the years this is the most consistent run since may of this year up until now that i've had on the channel since i first started and this was back in 2015. so we're we're getting close to a million views a month i don't know how you know trust me you know and about about 1500 or so something i forgot subscribers a month or so anyway i'm grateful but down below in the description box um check out our um uh wbc channel app sponsored by the powered by the vibe network i put a link for apple google ruku tv it's just a quick download we're working on some things and i'm trying to get exclusive interviews from wbc fighters on the channel and on the platform so take your time out like the video subscribe i'm trying to find in fact let's go listen to this one more time we're gonna go listen to um eddie hearn and what i was trying to do i was trying to pull up over on the zone the eddie hearn um interview he did after the event was over because dude looked like he was gonna cry because listen it's like this right in a rematch how does the rematch go i think it goes the same way Unless Usyk gets, I don't think that Joshua can knock Usyk out in the rematch. That's what he would have to do. And then now we know that Usyk can hurt Anthony Joshua. But see, for those who know who've been following Alexander Usyk, that's how he does. He wears you down mentally, and then he starts picking you apart late. He's been doing this literally since he really came on the scene like main, like on the scene, big time with Glowoski. Then he went over to HBO for Michael Hunter. Very quality win at the time at Cruiserweight. World Boxing Super Series, Cruiserweight, undisputed champion. And now he just captured four more belts, and if you include the IBO, WBA Super, IBF, WBO. And he was the WBO mandatory, by the way. He has no mandatories right now. He's free. So it's nothing stopping the Joshua versus, excuse me, Usyk versus Joshua 2 rematch. I'm guessing in Wembley, you know, they're probably going to go for 90, 100,000, you know, get AJ that that big cash out. Because you can hear from Eddie Hearn, yo, I don't think that, listen, this is not like the Andy Ruiz rematch. You know, I don't think that 
you know, Joshua can handle that shit. You know, and yes, he always has a knockout chance, but I don't think he can handle that. The only person right now at the heavyweight division, and we're going to go down the list in a minute, you know, down the rankings on my beautiful website, fightview360.com. The link is down below in the description box. The rankings are updated monthly in accordance with the sanctioning bodies. We even put up here at the top when all of the rankings were updated, even the ring. So we're going to go through these and, you know, we're going to make sure we change this tonight. We got to take them belts from you, baby. I'm sorry, AJ. Cool dude. You know, but we got to strip him down. We got to strip him. So, you know, let me play this um, interview here again for those who didn't hear from um, Eddie Hearn. Hold on. With Sky Sports. And about the rematch. And it's real. Like, listen, it's no excuses for this loss. Like, AJ lost. And can you kind of, can you say that AJ got beat up? I, yo, AJ got beat up. Especially them last rounds, Usyk was like, fuck it, we ain't leaving that shit to the cards, even though it went to the cards, and he was in his space the whole time. Like, you know, this is two losses for AJ, and especially with this heavyweight Game of Thrones thing going on right now, if AJ loses the rematch, AJ goes all the way to the back of the line. You're talking about, a, a well, the money part. You can still make a lot of money fighting AJ, but you're talking about him not getting a title shot because of the way your thing's set up. Say, for example, if he loses to Usyk again, hypothetically, in April of 2022, bro may not get another title shot till 2024 because the way, the, the way things are set up with mandatories and whatnot. Yeah, you know, the sanctioning bodies are going to try to find a way to push him to the front of the line for a mandatory because he brings in money and, you know, money talks, bullshit walks and follow the money with the sanctioning bodies. But if he loses again... And he lost to a cruiserweight. That's what people are going to say. That's what they're going to say. The people are going to be like, look, he couldn't even beat a cruiserweight. You know how motherfuckers is on social media? Let's listen to Eddie Hearn again. Let's Joshua hey. went straight back. I will cut this video off. There's way too many of you here to not like the video and subscribe. I don't ask you for super chat. You don't see all this Venmo and Cash App bullshit like a fucking telethon fucking save the fucking children. And the, the, the animals and shit on, on, on the screen, all that shit. But you can like the video and subscribe. It's free. Or dislike the video. I don't care. Actually, I do care. But help a brother out. Back to the dressing room for the medics to check him over. To him, how is he? Yeah, I spoke to him. Obviously, he's, you know, it was a tough fight, a grueling fight. He's not quite, you know, talking the way you'd expect him to talk at the moment. Devastated, already talking about training again. They want to look at the eye socket. Uh, he says it's fine. Um, but, you know, a devastating defeat. Obviously, a congratulations to Alexander Usyk. What a fighter. Put in a great performance tonight, and the better man won. Did you think that that could happen um, in, a, in a fight like that? I suppose it, it, it could, but so many people thought that AJ would be too big and too strong. It didn't go that way. It was a boxing match. Yeah, that was always really the, the, the danger of the fight. You overthink the fight. You try and be too technical. You don't use your attributes, and you don't make your mark early enough in the fight. Usyk's very fit, he's got great feet, he threw a lot of punches in there tonight. Um, you know, and it was all the things you worry about against a fighter like Alexander Usyk. He, he, he exercised his style very, very well. He was probably a little bit more aggressive than anticipated, which I think did him well. I mean, what was it, the first 10 seconds, he, he came out with a, a right hand, a left hand straight down the pipe. Um, he, was, he was really good tonight, you know, and he, he goes down in history, no complaints from AJ. He'll, he'll get up and go again. He's already talking about training on Monday, but it's a tough defeat. You know, this was getting beat by a pound for pound great fighter. We've been here before. You've been here, Madison Square Garden. That was different. This is just being beat by a better man on the night. And uh, you'd have to make some, some big changes in the rematch to avenge that defeat. I feel obviously quite harsh going straight to it, but rematch, you, sh you, the, the, um, you shift towards that now. Uh, what are the details of that? Does it have to happen before a certain date? Uh, we, we'll have enough time, you know, I think the, the the fighter in AJ is already talking about I'll win the rematch, I'll win the rematch. It was a tough defeat, you know, it was, uh, I had it reasonably close in the 8th or ninth round and Usyk just ran away with it, I thought 8-4, even 7-5, the best scenario for AJ, but Usyk was the, the deserved winner and he's got to make changes in the rematch because if, he, if that happens again, of course he'll get beat. He's got to impose himself early, it's going to be really difficult because Usyk's confidence will be sky high, but when you get to the level of Anthony Joshua, as we saw after the Ruiz defeat, there's, there's no 10-round comeback fights and warm-ups. You're straight back into the fire. And he will want to go straight big, back into that rematch. He will be an underdog in the rematch this time, after, after that tonight. But that's what he does, you know, and, and he chose tonight to take on a pound-for-pound pound great. 
it didn't work out, but he should get credit for that. He got, he stayed on his feet. I give him credit for that as well. But it's sport, and he was beaten by the better man. And congratulations to Alexander Usyk. Yeah, it can always happen. Final one. Do you think he has the desire um, to rebuild again? He's had to do it before. It's different this time. He has to do it again. This is his life, Andy. To be honest with you, he's already talking about being in the gym. He lives and breathes boxing. Boxing saved him. Boxing made him and he won't fall out of love with the game. When you do, that's time to walk away from the sport. The desire is still there, How it'll still be there, you? but you know, you can have desire, you've got to be good enough. I Hold on, Camille, I'll answer your uh, super chat in a minute. Let's finish listening to the um, interview from um, Eddie Hearn. He'll know when he watches that back. That, was a, that for me, was, a, was an average performance from Anthony Joshua. There's so much better he can do so much better in that fight. But he's facing, you know, a pound for pound great. And this is what happens in the sport. You can criticize Anthony Joshua, oh, he got beat, oh. But he's facing the best consistently. So you can't have it both ways. You know, you can, you, you, if you don't like it when they're fighting easy fights, but they get beat when they're fighting pound for pound greats, this is how it is. For me, that's what fighters should do, take on the very best. He did it. Tonight he came off second best, but respect for him to take it on Usyk, respect to Alexander Usyk. It was a high-level fight, and there's there's a new unified heavyweight world champion. There's no there's no point sulking about it. Like any bad news, you, you brush yourself down, you shake the other man's hand, you say congratulations, you were the better man. I go back to the drawing board, I rebuild, and I go again. That's what he will do. He's a great guy, but tonight belongs to Alexander Usyk. And it's as simple as that. You know, you can't, here's the thing. I have a hard time and help me out in the chat and in the comments. How does Anthony Joshua win the rematch? Does he take it to Usyk from the straight beginning? Try to back him up, get him on the ropes because he was trying to outbox Usyk and that's where he went wrong. But when he did make the adjustments in those middle rounds and especially to the body, he was having success. But Usyk, with the mind that he has and the fact that he's seen plenty of Anthony Joshua's in the amateurs, he can adjust way more in the rematch and probably stop and probably stop AJ. You clearly saw that he ate his best shots and now he has no respect for his power. Crazy. So let's go over right now and we'll look at the uh, rankings and talk about what's next for the division. Ooh. So I'm going to break it down for you. All right. Are you paying attention? We're about to go a little bit fast. So my beautiful website here, fightview360.com, if you want to keep track of the rankings for all the major sanctioning bodies, WBC, WBA, IBF, WBO, Ring Magazine, for all of the divisions, all the way down to 108. And even we got the bridge weight, right? Ew, we got bridge weight? Ew. Oh, good. Mikey took out the bridge weight division. Good. Don't bring it back, Mikey, if you're watching. Mikey updates this monthly. Um, at the top, we put when they're updated in accordance to the sanctioning bodies. I'm going to put the link right now. What am I doing? Put the camera up. I'm going to put the link right now in the uh, chat. Now, let's go through it. Now, listen, we're not going to bullshit around. I'm not going to joke around. Like, sometime I'll troll and I'll say, I'm picking this fighter to win, but I'm really not. I'm really, like, just messing around with you guys. Let me tell you right now, I got Tyson Fury defeating, and I mean, defeating Deontay Wilder again. On October the 9th, on PBC, on Fox, and ESPN, top-ranked pay-per-view, $79.99. We're going to be here for that card. The main event is Wilder versus, excuse me, Fury versus Wilder 3. Robert Hellenius versus Adam Konoski 2. F.A. Jagwa versus Frank Sanchez. Jared Big Baby Anderson versus Vladimir Tereshkin. That's the pay-per-view portion. Then on the, on the, on the, network tv broadcast buildup on espn plus and i believe espn 2 and fox sports one you're going to have edgar belanga up and coming rising 168 pound friends contender is he 68 or 175 i just was smoking so and i've been here for like eight hours literally i've been sitting here for eight hours um then you got the return of julian j rock williams versus i believe the guy's name aaron hernandez who very seductive card so we're going to be here covering all those fights with the post-fight press conference, fight week, everything. We just had a media call earlier this week. You can watch it on the channel where Deontay Wilder has finally broke his silence. And I like this docile Deontay Wilder. Like he sounds really, really good. And he's not feeding into all that glove and all that bullshit. Like, you know, 
But I think that Deontay Wilder is still going to get his shit pushed in. Just my personal opinion. And I like Deontay Wilder. 168, thank you. And I like Deontay Wilder. But, you know, we got to call the shit like it is, you know. People just be picking these fighters, you know, just because. Like, not even, like, just because it's like, oh, he's black. I'm going to pick him. Like, I get all that. Cool. I support all black fighters. But once again, as we're here real time, we want to we run a mature adult show. And I and, and, and when I first started on YouTube, I always would say, you know, to my former colleague whose name will not be mentioned, that like if I do these videos on YouTube, I want to be able to be myself because, you know, I was a little camera shy. So I was like, I'm going to do my videos and pretty much talk to you guys like we're homies. Yeah, some of you guys are some sons of bitches and I get cursed out a lot. Like, if you see some of the abuse I have to endure or endure in the comments, but I love you guys. You know, remember, we're not always supposed to agree. It's going to be some videos you're going to watch and be like, all right, this guy know what he's talking about. He cool. And it's going to be some videos you're going to watch like this fucking dickhead. You see what I'm saying? That's, you know, that's how homies roll. So boom, fist bump, boom. So, all right, listen, let's break down the heavyweight division real quick. Now... We're going to do a few hypotheticals in here while I run through these rankings. Also, help me out. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe. All right? Or just like the video. Or you can send me some super chat. You want me to put the Venmo? I don't have Venmo. You want me to put that in the cash app on the screen? You want me to put that stuff up there and start pandering? Oh, send me your super chats and all that shit. Clapper, shoot. Shoot clappers. Anyway, moving on. So... I think that Usyk versus Joshua rematch is going to happen. So far, what we've heard, it looks like um, it looks like it looks like Anthony Joshua's eye socket is not broken, no cut, so it looks like he can fight. I'm thinking that the Usyk uh, Joshua two rematch because of the rematch clause is going to be in what about April, Wembley? They're going to do what a hundred thousand something like that, or you know because of a site fee, they might try to take this shit to Saudi Arabia. You know they always trying to go over there. You know, um, but I hope that it's not drug out, you know, and both of these fighters end up taking God knows how long off. You know, I want this fight to happen no later than April or May of next year. All right. But it'd be great because AJ has a history of fighting around March or April or so. So, boom, you know, Usyk wins again. Let's say Usyk wins again. Usyk or whoever Joshua or Usyk, who wins later on that year, October, November, December. With the way the rankings are set up, there's no WBA mandatory right now. Trevor Bryan, WBA bullshit world champion, has to fight Daniel Dubois. The winner of that will become the mandatory for Anthony Joshua, but will likely not be ordered to fight, excuse me, Alexander Usyk, or for that WBA portion, Till about 2023. Now, this may be going over a lot of you head guys' heads, but follow me. These are deep rankings. So the next logical mandatory is likely going to be Joe Joyce. So the winner of Usyk Joshua 2 is going to have Joe Joyce have to fight Joe Joyce by the end of 2022. Usyk already beat Joe Joyce. I think that Joshua could probably ice Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce has got a really weird kind of style. I like him. I find him to be entertaining, but, you know, I think that Joshua will ice him, and I think that um, Usyk will just beat him again. So going back, the IBF, there's currently no mandatory for the IBF, and the IBF is the most strict and stringent of the sanctioning bodies. They don't care about no rematch clauses, none of that. When they order you to fight a mandatory, you fight a mandatory. Now, so far, there's been some shenanigans between Charles Martin, Philip Hergovitz, and Michael Hunter about who don't want to be the IBF mandatory challenger. So as it stands, hmm, no, 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 my bad, I got lost in my head. No, that's right. So far, we're on track, that's right. So as it stands, the only person fight that the winner of Fury versus Wilder three can fight and Usyk versus Joshua they have to fight each other or they have to fight their mandatories so for example if Usyk if he beats Joshua let me say it this way to stop confusing you the winner of Joshua Usyk Joshua two 
has to fight Joe Joyce. If not Joe Joyce, they have to fight the winner of Fury versus Wilder 3. So I think that all of these parties need to come together because as it stands, there's no more rematch clause for Fury Wilder 3. The winner of that can go their own way. Tyson Fury currently doesn't have a mandatory right now, even though it should be Dylan White, who's fighting Otto Wallin at the end of October. Andrew Ruiz, he's in the mix. Him and Luis Ortiz need to fight. But there's talk maybe Luis Ortiz, Charles Martin, or rumors Andrew Ruiz, Charles Martin. But these heavyweights need to stop bullshitting around because this division should have been undisputed a long time ago. What was it, about two years ago? So I think the team of Joshua, because listen, Joshua will take another loss. You know, he go way to the back of the line, bros. They all got to come up with a plan. So I don't think that Joshua can do it again. I don't think that he, I don't think, okay, if I was to say, I would say seven out of 10 times, Usyk would beat Anthony Joshua. I don't think, I don't think um, Daniel Dubois will get it. To, I think that the way things are right now, Joe Joyce is the next mandatory. Yes, Prince Charles Martin, former IBF champion. Y'all forgot who Charles Martin was? That was um, Anthony Joshua's first belt. Made a shitload of money. And it was risky for people just to think like, okay, well, just because Joshua's bigger and stronger, that just, you know, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a I told you so type of guy because, you know, Usa could have got his ass knocked out, but he didn't. We saw him take the best best shots from AJ. Like that was that was some pretty amazing shit right there, man. So in a perfect world for me, what do I want? And I'm gonna rate my heavyweights in the in a minute. We're gonna go right on the record and rate my heavyweights right here. No, 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 I haven't got my blood test yet. Uh black magic genetics, and he really into black magic too. Uh <laughs> he no bullshit. Uh, he said, T.C., aren't you 50% Ukrainian? Now, let me tell you something. I'm still learning, but I'm half black, for those who ask. Half El Chicano, Mexicano, and then half Irish. And I got like a, like a little bit of Turkish wolf blood. And I learned all this through ancestry. I know to you, to the mortals, it don't make no sense, but I'm more than a man. So... What was I talking about? You didn't maybe forget what I was saying. Anyway, how you guys doing? You guys liking the video? You're doing good? You watching UFC after this? This UFC card is going to be lit. In fact, the prelims are on now, so I'm going to take a little half an hour break after this stream is over. You know, go stretch my legs because I've been here since noon, bro. I've been sitting here. I watched that whole card. I watched um uh ill. Y'all want y'all want to slag on uh on uh Campbell Hatton? No, nah, the kid's only 20, 20 years old. We don't want to, but ill, bro. Campbell Hatton got a gift. I thought that Campbell Hatton would take his first pro defeat. Well, technically he hasn't by the time he got the 15 fights. But this guy that he fought, Sonny Martinez, he was two and four with zero KOs and he was stunting on Ann Hatton. I mean, I'm on Campbell Hatton. Like, bro, of course I'm black but I'm also Irish and El Chicano, Mexicano. Come on, man. So anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, ranking my heavyweights and saying what the perfect world is for me. So in the perfect world, you know, and I'm a realist, the winner of Usyk Joshua 2, oh shit, we missed something. Because if Usyk Joshua 2 happens, what happens with the winner of Fury versus Wilder 3? Doesn't that make sense now? for the winner of Fury Wash Wilder 3 to fight Dylan White since Usyk and Joshua are going to be tied up with the rematch clause. That makes sense. They might as well do that. So they need to start getting it done now. So, so here's a perfect scenario for me, and that's being a real, realist and knowing how things work with the rematch clauses and everything. Fury beats Wilder. Okay. Fury fights Dylan White in Mar February, March, or April, around the same time that Usyk versus Joshua happens. And then those winners fight 
Fury and Usyk because unfortunately that's what I think it's going to be even though the Joshua fight would make more money but I think it's going to be Usyk and I want to see that fight more now in November in October November of, or December around this time maybe later next year and then early 2023 because there's no moving up in weight you got to reign in early 2023 March February March April May the winner fights their mandatory Joe Joyce you see like how Joshua if he loses he will go so far down because the next mandatory after that would be the WBA Daniel Dubois versus Trevor Bryan will be over and you know no telling who they're going to have to fight what the IBF will be after that like it's yo that heavyweight division is deep crazy I hope they don't make... Now, let me tell you something. I've said it before in a video. Yes. Oh, and by the way, since you're all here, help me out. The WBC has launched has launched the app. We're in the very, very early phases of everything, but working on getting exclusive content. It's powered by the Vive Network. My content and other content creators' content is going to be on the app and on the app right now as we speak. I put three easy, simple links down below in the description box for you. One for the Google Play Store. One for the Apple Store and one for Roku. All you got to do is download it, have it on your phone because it's going to come in handy one day. So anyway, let me go ahead and see what I was saying. So when I was first contacted about joining the WBC channel on the Vibe Network, I was like, hold up, man. I can't just come on this app and, you know, be shilling. So we're not going to shill. I don't want to see Tyson Fury be made the WBC franchise champion. I don't. Oh, and we're going to get the WBC president on the horn, too. I don't want to see him like, bro, like, no, I don't. I don't want the winner of Fury versus Wilder three to be a franchise champion. No. Make that winner fight Dylan White. Or the winner of Dylan White versus Otto Wadling. And I'm not confident that Dylan White beats Otto Wadling. It's crazy. The heavyweight division is deep. Other fights that are supposed to happen are Luis Ortiz or Char and Charles Martin or Andrew Ruiz and Charles Martin. Why can't we just get Andrew Ruiz versus Luis Ortiz? Joseph Park is fighting Derek Chisora again in a rematch nobody asked for, and I love Derek Chisora. You know, always in some good fights, whether he get his ass knocked out or not. But that's not a fight we asked for, but these are the type of fights that fighters are going to be fighting to stay busy because the titles are all, you know, all taken up. And the WBA can't make bullshit titles no more. You know, they've been put on the hot seat. You know, by the way, this is just iced tea. I've been fucking up this, um, these gold peak teas, yo. I'm trying to like, you know, I've been getting my weight down. And got old and fat and bald sitting here doing these videos for you motherfuckers, man. You don't give me no respect. So I was trying to look for, let me, um, since we're at the end of the video and we got to get to UFC, let me open up the zone really quickly because I've been trying to look for Eddie Hearn's post fight interview because he sounded like he was great cry because, you know, Matchroom hasn't been doing well. And, you know, a guy like AJ taking a loss after you sign him to, if you don't know, they signed him to a lifetime deal. So Anthony Joshua, when he's 58, he can't fight. A motherfucking um, anybody on trailer. Matchroom's got to promote all of his fights. I'm trying to open up this app here, but it's been doing this the whole time. I want to see that uh, post fight interview. Lawrence O'Callaghan got a nice knockout, but then again, it's all about how you rank, you know, the dude he fought, uh, Dylan Prozovic. Colin Smith got probably the knockout of the year. I want to show it, but long story short, the zone has been messing with my videos, trying to police my shit because my ch my videos How have been doing. How dare you? Okay, all right. T, what you think of the fight? I already said what I thought of the fight, Camille. Oh, we just talked about it for 40 minutes. But thank you for the two dollar super chat. We literally just talked about it for 40 minutes. If you want to know how I scored the fight, here I'll pull up my little card right here if y'all can see it. Can you see it? So I gave rounds. Round four was a swing round. Depends on what you were looking for, but I gave um, Usyk a clean sweep of the first four. Five and six, I gave those definite AJ rounds. Seven Usyk, eight AJ, 
Nine, I got a question mark around, but I gave it to Usyk. And then a sweep of the last three. You know, even the commentators were talking about how he needed a, um, a KO. Let me see if I can find this video. Too bad I can't show you guys highlights, man. The zone be on some weird shit sometimes. It's like, bro, I spend my whole days promoting these fights for y'all to be just fucking with my shit. But yeah, you know, that's, that's, you know, like AJ didn't just lose toward the end of the fight. He got beat up by the smaller man. Like, bro, that's going to, that, that's going to sting on social media. You know, how are people doing their YouTube videos? I haven't watched anyone's YouTube videos. Like, are people talking mad shit about AJ saying he lost to a cruiserweight? I'm pretty sure that's what they're doing. A whole bunch of I told you so's. Yeah, AJ going radio silent. Damn, AJ. That was a bad loss, man. It was a bad loss. Yeah, let me read some of the comments here. See what you guys are talking about. Uh, no, they. I don't think Joe Joyce is going to be ordered to be... Um, I don't think they're going to order Joe Joyce yet because Usyk is just getting his mandatory shot. And I don't think it's going to be two back-to-back -back mandatories. They're going to wait because you got to think they want to follow the money too. And Usyk, I mean, and Joe Joyce don't bring in no, no, the same money that uh, Usyk um, and Joshua too, or Usyk and Fury will bring in. And also who would you consider the A side between Fury and Usyk? It's got to be Usyk, right? People would say, well, you know, it's got to be Usyk. Usyk versus Fury. It sounds kind of funny, but it's got to be Usyk. Like, look what he just did. I'm sorry. That's I'm sticking with that. It's Usyk versus Fury, and I'm a Tyson Fury guy. That's straight left to the body. AJ had no... You know, you can tell AJ was thinking a lot. Like, Usyk, with all that fainting, yo, he can wear you out mentally. He can really take his toll on you. But dude ain't no joke. Dude ain't no joke. Y'all talking about Kate Abdo? Roy Jones and Tony Bellew? Roy Jones and Tony Bellew, if he was watching the Zone broadcast here in the States, they were on some weird shit. Oh, let me rate these heavyweights real quick while we're here. So my number one heavyweight is Tyson Fury. Number two, now I'm giving it to Alexander Usyk. Number three, Deontay Wilder. No. Number three, Anthony Joshua. Number four, Deontay Wilder. Who's number five? Who would you... I know all our list is different, but... Number five, who am I giving number five to? Am I giving that to Andy Ruiz or Dylan White? Hmm, number five. I'm going to go ahead and give it to Dylan White. Number five, number six, Andy Ruiz. Number seven, Joe Joyce, because he beat Daniel Dubois. Number eight. Between Luis Ortiz and Joseph Parker. I'm going to go. Hmm, interesting. I'm going to go. Joseph Parker. Number nine, Luis Ortiz. And I'm going to wrap out my number 10 with who? My number 10 heavyweight. Damn, that's tough. Because you got Felix Hergovitz, Michael Hunter, Robert Herlinius. You got to put Robert Herlinius over, over um, Adam Kwanowski. Huey Fury. You know who I'm going to go with for number 10? The People. You're number 10. That's that's how I'm going to do it. You're number 10. Because I don't know who number 10 is. I got I to gotta really, you know, really, really. Hergovitz? 
Nah, it's the number 10 is the people. You're the reason why we're here. Thank you guys for watching. I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. I got to get the UFC. So we, we, we will be here tomorrow for a stream called Sunday Service, where we're going to talk about everything, including the whole division as a whole. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, T Street Controversy. See you guys later.